really important around the region to help people move to their jobs, to school, to get back home at the end of the day. The other part of this is how do we fund it? And the, uh, the, the conversation that we're starting, the conversation that's begun already in many places, is how do we raise the kinds of funds we need to deliver on this kind of an investment? So I'm not setting out a, a definitive plan for how we're going to fund this. That's what we actually are obligated to report to the province and municipalities by June the 1st of 2013. This is instead to start the conversation about here's the kinds of things that we can build. Now let's talk about how do we think that we should be paying for it here in this region. In Hamilton, Ontario this week, our city council debated the LRT and we had our mayor stating that he's been told the city's contribution is to be a third. Can you confirm all that information? What I can tell in Hamilton and for all the other communities is that first we need an investment strategy that sets out here are the revenue tools. Some of those tools could be provincial, some of them could be local. What the actual split between provincial and municipal, I don't think I can give you that information at this point in time. I think there's an expectation there's going to be use of both what are normally considered to be provincial funding tools and municipal funding tools. What those tools are and what the spread between and the rates are We'll have to see as we come up with our final advice in June. Why did you decide to prioritize now the, the downtown relief line? What went into that, into that decision? And, and when exactly will we see it completed by? So we brought forward the downtown relief line because we think it's really important from a regional perspective to deal with the crunch of getting people into downtown Toronto, especially south of Blur Street. Uh, one of the projects that we've always had in the big move was the downtown relief line, but in the longer term. What we're actually proposing is to bring it forward in time, and that will help us uh, for example, to deliver the Young Subway extension to York Region, which we also think is an important project. So the reason why we're bringing it forward is we think it's important to provide more capacity, not only for the downtown area, but more broadly in the region so that we can support other projects. It's as important to bring suburban people from Scarborough or from York Region or from other parts of the region into the city as it is to move people within downtown Toronto. And sorry, within 15 years it will be constructed or by 2030? Right. Right, so we're talking about moving it forward from the 16 to 25 year planning horizon, which is where we had it originally, into the next 15 years. So uh, we do need to do more planning work with the city and the TTC about what that project is and how it's going to be phased. Uh, but we are, we do believe that we need to bring it out earlier in the planning horizon. Since there's, since there's, a, since there's no actual money attached to this, there will be people who see it more as a wish list than an actual plan. I mean, is this a would be nice to have or is this a plan at this point? This is our plan. Uh, we have the big move. We have $16 billion worth of funding guaranteed right now for the projects that are underway. We do have another $34 billion to get to that $50 billion level that we had talked about always in the big move. And I think as we start the conversation about how do we pay for it, we also have to talk to people about what do you get for it? What are the kinds of benefits you're going to get in your community, in your neighbourhood, if we make the decision to make these investments? Well. My view at this point in time is our, our charge, our responsibility is to come up with that investment strategy. We've got a piece of legislation that says that we have to report to the province and municipalities by June 1st, and that's my task is to make that report. Okay, you moved a couple of things up on the list. Did you move anything down? There are some, uh, we've done some work, for example, on some of the GO projects. We had done work on the GO 2020 plan. We had done environmental assessments on projects like the uh, GO extension to Bolton, and some of those we shifted to be later in the plan than they were originally. So there are some moves that we're going to be proposing for projects as well in that way. It always seems that like, uh, subways particularly take a long time. Even if the money was on the table tomorrow, I think there'd be a lot of people who would say it was not realistic to do this in only 15 years. How soon do you need to have money to hit that 15-year goal? Well, I think what we need to do is remember, first of all, we've got our existing projects that we're delivering, and those projects will start to come into service over the next uh, uh, year or so and complete around 2020. This is about how do we start to populate the next uh, wave of projects. How, sorry, sorry, go ahead. So, so if you, I mean, when do you need to get that money though to, to hit that 15 year goal? I mean, how soon does this money have to be flowing? So our plan is to bring that investment strategy forward to the province and municipalities in June. I can't predict at this point in time whether or not we've got a decision in June or there's another process or another conversation that needs to happen. Uh, but we want to get to that choice as early as possible because, of course, as we all know, as you just said, uh, to build infrastructure of this nature, it takes a long time. You need to make commitments early and you need to keep moving along. So uh, we're hopeful that as we submit our plan in June that there can be some quick decision making.
already on the existing line, sort of rather than build, building a new line, which is extremely costly. Absolutely, and our plan is full of uh, what we would call optimization of the existing system. So, for, for example, on the GO system, we're providing more train service. Uh, on the subway line, they're, uh, they're uh, putting in place something called automatic train control, which will mean that you can have more train service on the existing subway line. So we also, in, in addition to expanding the system, we need to make better use of what we've got already. Uh, well, we've been working with York Region over the last uh, few years in terms of the uh, preliminary engineering uh, and some of the uh, initial concept planning. We still have a lot of work to do, the launch environmental assessments, for example, uh, but uh, York Region has been very active in terms of trying to put in pay place the business case to bring that project forward. So uh, we have more work to do, but there's been some planning work done already and some of the business case work has started. Can you say how many No, I'm sorry, I don't have that. Uh, no, I don't. Sorry, I just don't have that off the top of my head. What about any specifics on the downtown relief line? Is there any? I mean, there's probably a lot of diagrams flying around. So it's to be it's to be determined at this point. Is my understanding? What are some of the options? And I mean, estimated 13 kilometers. What, where would that go from and to? Well, we think first what we need to do is sit down with the city and the TTC and York Region for that matter and talk about the concept and how do we serve the region as a whole. You know, we've all seen the line of the downtown relief line that connects from the Danforth subway somewhere in the Pape area into somewhere around the uh, the the Queen Station along the, the, the Young Line. That's one concept, but we actually have to prove that and test that and come up with the best alignment. Uh, some people have suggested we should be looking at the railway corridors and how they might provide some alternatives. So the first thing we need to do is to maybe step back from the lines of the map that we're sometimes very quick on drawing and just think about what's the best project and have a very public process about how we define that. Uh, how the other two lines were in the Council, there was talk of extending some of them Absolutely not. They're not off the table. What I talked about today was what are the next wave of projects and we think the next wave of projects in Toronto for example would include the downtown relief line, would include the Young Subway extension. Uh, that doesn't mean that those other projects like the Eglinton West extension to Pearson Airport ultimately is something that we don't believe is important. We just think that they're going to be for a future date. You mentioned fare increases. Uh, in Hamilton people are very sensitive to that because most of them are coming into Toronto. What are we looking at for fare increases? What's the horizon on that? Well, I don't think I'm intending to say that there is going to be fare increases. I think what I uh, am saying is, is that uh, some people might say, why don't you increase fares to generate money? And I think m my message is, is that our work would suggest that increasing fares unto themselves is not going to provide the kind of revenue that you need to build the infrastructure that I believe this, this region requires for its future. So it's a tool, uh, but it's not the way that we're going to solve this issue. Sorry, I missed the first part. How much money does the investment strategy need to raise to build the big move? So, absolutely. So, uh, what the projects I talked today are worth about thirty-four billion dollars in today's dollars. What's um, um, sorry, uh, I can't. <laughs> I can't do the math off the top of my head. But what we're looking at raising is a uh, is that funding over the next uh, fifteen or, or years or thereabouts in terms of the the, the money going forward. So it gives you a sense. Well, you might recall the big move talked about $50 billion, and we've already got $16 billion that's committed and going forward. We talked about $34 billion here today, so you can see we're trying to stay within that original $50 billion.